So the next talk you're going to hear is by Jakob Rumin on Go to 80. Um, our next speakers are Jacob is an artist, designer, engineer, and community builder from Copenhagen and Go to 80, who came here from Sweden and calls himself an old media artist with many talents. Um, they both will present their ongoing robotic research project, Robotic Music, which is centered around automation, creation, and loss of control. I'm super excited for this presentation, and let's welcome our new music robot overlords. I'm Jacob and go to 80. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thanks for inviting us. Thank you for the introduction. Not so sure about the overlord part, but uh, let's see down the road. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm Jacob and. Yeah. And I'm go to 80. That's my artist name. Um, I do a lot of music with old computers, like this Commodore 64 that we're gonna see. Yeah, some more of. I have a kind of shared passion for old machines or just technology in general, and I normally don't do music as much. More sound and media arts in general, and you can see. One uh, movie that I've made in the video lounge at one tonight, which is kind of investigating rare earth elements and kind of the materiality of the internet. Um, this is something different. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we're very happy to be invited here because it's kind of a new project for us. We've been working on it for about six months, so it's, uh, it's very open. Still, we're not really sure where we're going with this yet. I mean, we'll, we'll figure it out along the way. Yeah, so it's important for us to stress that this is artistic research in the sense that not like uh, scientific research, it's more explorations in a field that we are not specialists in. And also, it's important for us to stress that we're really excited to be in a place like CCC with so many, so much more talented people than us uh, present. Like really, and we're we're really hoping to somehow, you know, start a conversation with you guys. So we're also tr aiming to leave some some space for Q and A, but also we have the robots standing outside, and we'll make some music on it after the talk. And tomorrow, we'll bring a second robot and a drum machine, and maybe we can kind of jam and talk, and people are very welcome to come and, and hack on these robots with us. We really, yeah, we love that. Yep. <clears throat> Okay, but so we've, uh, we've worked together for about 10 years. This was the first project that we did together. It's called uh, HT Gold, and it was presented on this huge screen in the main square of Copenhagen. And uh, it's basically a, an old hockey game for the Commodore 64, but we manipulated it, so while you play it, it sort of just destroys itself and becomes this beautiful mess. Uh, but it's still playable and it's still a lot of fun for, you know, people who can take, take the heat. Um, and, and when Anders says that we've been working together for 10 years, it sounds like we're this kind of duo. It's not like <laughs> we're actually not working together that often. We've seen each other more during the last half year than we have maybe in the uh, previous nine and a half. <laughs> yeah. So. So we live in two different cities, and so we get together when doing projects, but it's not like we're kind of going to work in the same studio, um, just to clarify. This is a different project we made in uh, 2013, um, Memo Blast. It was one of the performances at uh, like opening the Transmediale in, in 13, and it was, 
yeah, we had open fax lines, people could fax in uh, different content to us, and we were basically emulating this kind of dysfunctional office environment, um, receiving faxes and kind of copying them and trying to sonify them at the same time. Yeah, so the faxes that came in, we, uh, we tried to process them, and I tra tried to adapt the music from the faxes, uh, basically, which was very difficult. But, yeah. uh, this is another project called Data Slave, uh, in kind of the same vein, where uh, this is an old police station that I'm sitting in, uh, and people write, fill in forms with what kind of songs they want, and then I get something like five minutes to make the song, <laughs> and then I save it on a floppy disk and give it to them, and then it's, it's their, their song. And this is an example of how an, an order could look like. Uh, so that was quite difficult as well. Um, yeah, I guess we like to sort of punish, punish ourselves a little bit. Yeah, and I guess kind of falling in this tradition of, of scripting ourselves and working within some kind of scripts, like some, I don't know if you call it fluxus or whatever, but like kind of giving up control to, to some other system or... or So, like most people, I guess we're fascinated about robots, but we're also a little kind of, yeah, I don't know, there's a lot of emotions <laughs> connected with robots, uh, and mostly it's also, I guess at least personally for me, it's been this kind of frustration about fascination of robots, and they're coming, they're coming, they're coming, but they're never really coming. Uh, I'm never really getting a robot, but then suddenly this summer we, we actually got a robot, like we got a possibility of, of fooling around with a, with a robot, basically, and we, we, we grabbed that possibility without maybe completely knowing what we were heading towards. I mean, we had ideas, and we shared some of these ideas, uh, and we set up um, a small mini-residency at a Copenhagen uh, floating hackerspace called Illutron. Um, yeah, we were basically, this, is, this robot is called the, the U-Arm Swift Pro. It's this kind of open, easily hackable robot. And we were just using this week to try to gain control of the robot enough that it could kind of be an extension of Anders. So, Basically, what you're seeing here is Anders with a keyboard controlling this little laptop. It's down on the left. That is then controlling the robot arm via some serial commands, G-code. And then the robot arm is basically just kind of replicating the key presses that Anders is doing on the keyboard. So it's just an extended arm somehow, very elaborate prosthesis. Yeah, elaborate, but then on the other hand, it has only one finger. Commodore 64 computer that I mentioned before from the early 80s, and the software uh, is called Defmon. It's a it's a new software. It's not old stuff, so you can really do some pretty amazing stuff with it. And what you're seeing is basically the robot inserting notes 
uh, changing the notes in a, in a loop that's, that's running with only one finger. Yeah, I'll push. So with this kind of first video prototype, we got booked to do a lot of stuff <laughs> suddenly. <laughs> um, <laughs> And uh, we got invited to, uh, to this uh, Algomac festival in Sheffield, uh, this festival of uh, algorithmic and mechanical movement, to uh, basically play at a rave. Um, so we had, to <laughs> we had to work a bit on, on that, uh, but we kind of we managed to get the robot to a state where it could load songs and you know, insert notes, delete notes, mute voices, bring stuff up and down, and basically in the end it actually could play kind of a full set, like we played half an hour or something, or the robot played half an hour, and I guess because we were still maybe doubting if we could pull it off, you were there playing as well, like kind of head to head with the robot, um, but actually, you know, you were mostly just kind of filling in little extra things. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it was more like Anders trying to keep up with the robot maybe, or playing on top. Could show a small clip. Yeah, so, I mean, this experience of, of that the robot already kind of after, after just, um, I don't know, a couple of months of, of fooling around was able to, you know, we basically could reduce ourselves to technicians setting up the robot and then, you know, in Sheffield I literally pushed the button and then I went and saw the show. Um, I don't know, that kind of started some things. That was, a, that was kind of emotional somehow. <laughs> and, um, and we got invited to play at the internet days in, in Stockholm, like doing the lounge music for the kind of chill out and beer session after the days. So we basically took the challenge to let the robot play dub techno type stuff for five hours unsupervised. Um, and then we, um, we were just kind of hanging out in the bar. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you'll see in the video, I guess. We, we set up two tables, basically, like we're doing out there. So the robot on one table, and we're kind of next to it and we have a lot of time to have conversations with people about like kind of the future of robotics and like when they become creative and yeah take our um, jobs or whatever and it's like yeah, this kind of I'm, I'm i'm imagining at least there will be a lot of these jobs where you just have to kind of hang out and just once in a while fix the robot if it's messing up or something <laughs> Yeah, and for this one, we actually put a lot of effort in making 
the, what the robot does a little bit more dynamic, like adjusting it for each song and making it more sort of diverse what it's doing. So, so actually now we, uh, yeah, I mean we sort of knew what it was supposed to do, but it was still somehow a surprise, and it was just this kind of magic of seeing a robot do something that it was just, uh, it's a really strange feeling. Um, like, I mean, it's still, like, we do the music, the songs, but the robot performs our songs. So, so the songs actually become something, something new. Um, yeah, which is, yeah, it's like a weird mix of sad, sadness, happiness, a bit scare, scary, sort of, or just fun. It's a, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a weird stuff, definitely. And on top of that, I mean, we're talking a lot about electronic music and how it's hard to make stuff minimal enough to basically it's kind of shut up and just repeat long enough. Like, we both have a tendency, I think, to fill in too many notes, maybe for mainstream techno or something, but the robot is like super cool. <laughs> like, you know, it can really, you know, hold it, you know? Yeah, <laughs> so a little bit longer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay, let's see. Yeah, so I guess it's also important for us to say that the Commodore is a good place to start because it's got keys and it's easy to push keys with if you just have one finger, you know. Um, and the Chaos Pad is also really good for just one finger. Um, so right now we're more like, and we're thinking about drum machines now as well because they're good for one finger. So right now the, the kind of the, the musical of, I don't know, the gear is kind of dependent on kind of one finger push interaction, um, which is kind of beautiful too. It, it, it takes some of all the choices out of production, I guess. Yeah. So it's not to say that this is only a C64 or project or something like that. We can imagine doing all kinds of things with this robot, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now we're here, um, and we brought two robots, um, and one, like we said, for playing, and then one for hacking, and. I mean, we really encourage you guys to come and, and, and play with us. And of course, I mean, most of the coding we're doing is relatively banal. It's more like kind of generative code based a lot on randomness and so on. But of course, we know that there's all this neural network AI stuff that's really booming. And it's apparently good at making music. So if there's some people out there that kind of are into that or know how to maybe remix what the robot has already done or compose new stuff. I mean, we'd really like to, to talk with you. And yeah, I mean, we have really good training data as well. I guess you should kind of explain yeah, that. Yeah, so I mean, I have, because I've used these old computers for so long and the files that you save, it's all like self-contained source files or whatever, so everything is, is in there. And they're really, really small, these files as well. I think, uh, yeah, I checked my folder earlier today. It's like 50 megabytes for 20 years of, of everything that I made, like all the work files and everything. So, <laughs> you know, and, and then, yeah, we just realized that, wow, imagine, you know, feeding some neural network with this stuff then we can really just, uh, yeah, fuck off and do nothing. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, we'll see. Or maybe it doesn't work at all. Or, or like, you know, jam with the robot. You know, it doesn't have to be that we're just kind of leading. I don't think we will, but it's, it's, it would just be really fun to... I mean, also for me to have Anders hanging around in Copenhagen and I can jam with him when he's, you know, back home. Yeah. Yeah. Come tomorrow. There was the 10 minute sign, so I'm skipping a fast. But tomorrow from 11, we're playing there. The gig starts at 9, I think. Yeah. And we'll play around, or the robot will play around two hours. Yeah. Yeah. So pro probably starting a bit slow, but then ramping it up. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Questions? Go to AT. What a cool robot <laughs> you built. So we have about 10 minutes for questions. Please, uh, we have the first one, eh? Uh, could you involve a bit more why you chose such a simple robot of like the symbolism or the systematic aspects of it like, attracted you to using such a simple system as opposed to all the huge and cool software solutions that would be able to automate music and all these things? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I guess, you know, you were making music on a Commodore 64. So we're not, you know, software guys so much. It's, it's kind of, I guess... You mean specifically the robot? Why would not choose a more complex robot? Or, or um, doing it all in software, right? That's what you're talking about. Yeah, both that and why don't you just build a software interface where you just like get the signals right to the Commodore, like there's other solutions as opposed to using such a mechanical, simple robot. Yeah. Now because it's just, it's a completely different feeling to have, you know, a robot arm doing it rather than just, you know, something invisible. Um, and I guess we need to add also that we're not, we don't really know what we're doing, right? I mean, we got together with the robot because we thought the robot was cool, you know? Uh, and then it turned out that it was actually kind of pathetic, but that was fun. <laughs> so I guess if we'd known what we know now, maybe we wouldn't have started, but you know, it's, it's, that's not the way this project works. It's very much kind of exploration and and again, I mean, we also really like these old machines, so it makes sense that we have a robot interacting with a C64, and I mean, the C64 doesn't take MIDI or like fancy <laughs> protocols like that, so we have to actually touch the keys. Yeah. Um, thanks. Uh, microphone two, please. Hi. Um, how much of the ro what the robot does is pre-programmed and just replaying a pre-composed piece, or how much randomness or uh, computational patterns involved in that music? Well, I mean, the bass, the bass is always a, a, a pre-composed song, basically. And then it, um, yeah, what it does is it's, yeah, I mean, it's pretty random, but within some kind of boundaries. Like, we say what notes it should press, but we don't say when it should press it, for example. Or we say, okay, maybe you can change the, the rhythm a little bit, but not just completely destroy uh, everything. So, I mean, everything that happens is at least a little bit random, I guess, you can say. Yeah, more or less everything is actually kind of based on random, but of course within some kind of logic structure, right? Um, yeah, so it's, 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 it's never, it's, it's, there's no kind of direct playback of anything. It's like that's, that's yeah, we haven't figured out how to do that. <laughs> yeah. All right, thank you. But like a future challenge is to make, to, to compose stuff that will be more useful for the robot, basically. Like we didn't really have time to do that yet, but we want it to be more more free and, and do its own music from, from scratch, more or less. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, so right now it's loading stuff and modifying it, but we of course wanted to start saving stuff and then be stable enough that we can kind of leave it for a week and then come back and see what it's been up to. Um, yeah. yeah. But I, and I really like this kind of idea of making music for the robot so that I adapt to the robot and it's one <laughs> finger because then it's, I really, really have to, you know, delete nine fingers and some, you know, it's just a, a completely different way. So I have to adapt to, to the robot, uh, which I think is cool. Thanks. Um, microphone one, please. Um, since there is a source code, is it available on GitHub or are you planning to do it? On Git put, putting on GitHub? It is on GitHub. It's a mess. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's there. It's there. It's, yeah. Okay. It's called Robot Music. It's there. Huh? Thanks. Um, number two, please, in the back. Um, so, is your robot very precise, or have you ever had the situation where it just made a mistake, and you thought, well, that that wasn't planned, but sounds okay as well, I guess, or is there, or is it just precise enough that that doesn't happen? <laughs> I mean, it, in theory, it's really precise. Um, people put print heads on it and use it as a 3D printer, sure. and so on. But I mean, we, it messes up all the time. We have a, a kind of a big headache on calibration and so on, because every time it, yeah, it bounces into the key, we have to kind of restart. And it's, I mean, it's, so far we survived all gigs, but we were just having a lot of trouble right now. So hopefully it's going to run. <laughs> but it doesn't have a, um, an effect on your creative process. Well, it has some stress. Yeah, <laughs> stress. some uh, stress. adrenaline. <laughs> yeah, no, but when it when it sort of messes up, it just completely uh, messes up, and it yeah just presses somewhere else completely. So then it's just out of oh, okay. So it just gets out of order. Device. Yeah. All right. Cool. So it's not. It's got no feedback. Like there's no camera on it, or it's just like it has to basically just remember all the coordinates. So it's a super fragile system if it messes up, yeah. Thanks, uh, number four, please. So I'm gonna creep out like uh, more than half of the people here. So my question is, have you ever thought about uh, putting the robot in a club and then like trying to measure how happy the crowd is with the music it produces and then kind of so by, I don't know, facial recognition, recognizing how many people are on the dance floor and stuff like that, and then giving the feedback to the robot again. So making kind of smart music for the masses. <laughs> um, I guess the short answer is n no, but, uh, <laughs> but we have been thinking a lot about putting the robot maybe in the forest and then just kind of playing music for the animals. <laughs> <laughs> or, or even better, like this kind of the idea of, of re removing the DJ and like having a wall in front so that nobody knows it's a robot if it's playing in a club. But that's it's, also an awesome idea. Because, I don't know. We, one thing that's kind of interesting with the robot and all this talk about robot overlords and so on is that, I don't know, dealing with it, it's like it's, it's, a, it's a thing, it's an entity, but it's more like an, maybe an animal or something like that that might grow up to be really powerful, but it's, it makes us look differently at the world somehow. And it's, right now I think it relates very nicely to animals almost. So, so kind of putting it in the forest and would, would be, really make sense, I think. Okay. Happy animals. Um, huh? Number one, please. Well, my question is kind of, kind of related. Is the robot using any sort of input from what's happening to trigger those, those random process? Or, or for now it's just randomly, randomly triggering stuff? Yeah, it's yeah. There is no uh, no input like that, not not yet anyway. 
No, I mean, we've been talking about writing our own random, like, we've been talking a lot about random, right? So, writing our own random functions, of course, that are then pseudo-random somehow, and feeding something into that. But I don't think we're very interested in making it, like, super interactive as such, because... Huh? It, yeah, it was... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I don't. I mean, I don't. I don't see the need for all this kind of interaction. I think it's actually nice that it has this kind of weird inner life, and you have to to understand it. It's not like understanding mm, us. But but I think like th this is what I mean is uh, if it by itself can trigger its own randomness by whatever is happening around it or whatever is happening in the tracker that's playing. I don't know. That that's my question. I don't know. Well, not now, but okay. of course it could go that way. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think the, it's, it doesn't really have to be so, you know, complex to, 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 to make me feel like it's somehow, you know, yeah, a, a thing in itself. It, it's just like, just this tiny movement is like magic to me, even though I know it's not magic, <laughs> but, but it feels like it's, it's enough to just be really a simple system. I think that's cool in totally. itself. The result is, is amazing. <laughs> Aesthetic, aesthetically is amazing. Thanks. 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 Thank you. Um, do you see the signal angels? Do we have a question from the internet? No. Shakes head. Okay, then one last question from Mike Four, please. Um, I think from a performance perspective, it's really interesting your placement, you know, just sitting and watching the robot. Uh, and it also brings, like, it brings a, a lot of questions and also it reminds me of how all of the discourse of how labor is more going towards, like, uh, roles of supervision that you're supervising the robot. So my question is, even if uh, after some time it wouldn't be doing a lot of errors, would you still sit next to it? Like, I'm just wondering about the role of uh, like yourself while the robot is performing. Yeah, yeah, I mean it's a good good question because I guess you can yeah, I mean we could send the robot off to just do shows on its own, I guess. Uh, which I think is pretty cool. That, that I, I would like to do that. But I would also like to jam with the robot and actually do stuff together. I think that's something that interests me more, uh, that it actually becomes someone that you can work like, together with. But in the video you were showing, you were just sitting, there was a part where you were just sitting and the yeah. robot, and I was saying that this part is actually very like potent, really strong, you know, you're just sitting and yeah. the robot is doing its thing. Yeah, yeah, because I mean, it, it has all these connotations about robots stealing our jobs and, and, all, yeah. and all this, and we're, we're playing with this yeah. idea uh, too, but I guess we're not really sure... Uh, I mean, yeah, where to go with it. Yeah, for now it's really interesting to sit there. And, and I guess we'll be sitting there as long as the conversations we have with people sitting next to it are interesting. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Speaking of sitting, people are sitting here for a while now. Thanks uh, to all of you for the wonderful questions. And thanks again to Jakob and go to AT for this wonderful talk. Thank you.